So good morning, welcome along again to Eclipse Motorcycles today, another ride test. This one is going to be the Lexmoto Assault 125 for another customer. We've got a lot of bikes going out over the next couple of weeks again. So just looking around this bike, LED indicators to the rear, LED stoplight, you've got that nice bronzing to those rear shocks, 17 inch tyres on this, and of course the bronzing to the side of that engine casing. Pegs on this, very very good, nice hard metal peg and they've got the gratings on them just to grip the feet. Nice dual sport tyres as well. And tyres on this are a lot better than they were a couple of years ago. It's got that semi enduro front end and it's got the very similar tank as to what the ISCA has but it's got the LED indicators built into the front of those tank panels. Just looking around this side, this one does have kickstart as well so should you flatten the battery you have that kickstart option. Very easy to obviously maintain and get to the spark plug check your oil levels and you do have a sight glass just to the bottom just for the manual check of those oil levels and nice bronzing as well to the peg brake lever and to the exhaust as well so absolutely beautiful and you've got this carbon look effect that runs down the side of the bike on your side panels as well so we we'll take this one out get this up and do a ride test on this for the customer so looking to put about another 20 miles on every bike that we do. From start up, putting the ignition on. Nice big rev counter. Miles per hour come up on the screen here. The time, your gear indicator and your mileage at the bottom. Very easy on the controls as well. Start button, kill switch over on the left hand controls your horn. Indicators, main beam, dip beam and on the back of this you have a hazard light switch. So just firing this one up, ticks over absolutely lovely. And once again on the mirrors, just for those that love commenting about my mirrors, I have about a quarter of my shoulder in this, but once again, a nice wide mirror that gives you an ample view of the road behind. Main stand and kick uh, side stand on this one. We've got it on the main stand. So we're just gonna head off into traffic and get some mileage on this bike. Now seat in position, pegs on this very, very comfortable. And it tucks your knees nicely in to the side of the tank as well. So once again, just waiting to pull out into traffic. While we're waiting for the lights to change, we're going to edit the video out here and I'll cut back in once we get past these roadworks. So we're just moving out into traffic past the roadworks, fourth gear and then up into fifth gear and finally bringing the power on in top gear and sitting at a nice steady 40 to 42 mile an hour for the purposes of running in and road testing. Suspension on this very very good soaking up the bumps and of course you've got those twin shocks to the rear on this bike and with those dual sport tyres, especially on a wet road like today, very, very manageable. Just pulling it in on that front brake, clutch in and pull down on that front brake just to check the front brake out. Absolutely perfect. And then heading out through the, the gearbox. One, two, three, four, and then into top gear and bring the power on. Gear change is lovely and crisp. Obviously a lot of people have commented that uh, some gearbox is a little bit clunky to start off, they will be until they wear in, but normally if we pick up a gearbox issue, it's normally resolvable, but it does wear in in time, but the gear response on this, absolutely perfect. Once again, levers all set up at the right height for me, and sitting at 42 mile an hour for the purposes of ride tested. and a very very planted feel on this bike now a lot of people have commented that uh, obviously this has the enduro front end and the very similar rear end as to what the Iska has it's one of those Marmite bikes some people like it some people don't they wish the Assault was back in as I always say watch this space there may be something coming next year but obviously Lexmodo changed their bikes up very very regular just to keep up with 
the trends and what they what they want in the market. But as I say, this one is appealing to some. It's, some people just think it's a very very ugly bike. Personally, all bikes to me are very very nice until you get that eye. So I'm a lover of sports bikes. I'm not a lover of cruisers. Not a lover of scooters, but. If it was your last resort and you needed a bike to travel to, any bike is good. It's just what is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And this is very, very comfortable to actually ride. The arm placement is very, very good. Knees tucked into the tank, especially with that, that new style tank that they brought out, does deflect the wind very, very well. Now, obviously, first couple of videos that I did of the Esca I absolutely hated the bike I slated it I said the tank looks like a, a ladybird opening its wings and it wasn't appealing to me I thought it was an ugly bike once I actually got out and rode the Iskas and the assaults that you realize how much that panel at the front deflects the wind off your knees and obviously if you uh, ride naked bikes without a fairing you are going to suffer from the wind on the knees, you're going to get the water splashes in wet weather, you're going to end up with the cold ankles, cold toes depending on what boots or shoes you are wearing. But this does the job very very well of just getting a little bit of that wind off of your knees so you're not going to end up with sort of the cold aching knees after a 20 or 30 mile ride. So I'm actually starting to really appreciate this tank on this bike and the tank on the Iska. Now I did absolutely slate them and it, it did change my mind after a couple of rides. So what I'd always say, any bike, go and have a look at it. Everything looks great in a photo. Photoshop or taking bike photos at certain angles can make a bike very, very appealing and it's not till you actually sit on a bike and is it comfortable enough for me? Does it do the job? So I'd always say go and look at a bike. And obviously I've been uh, myself looking at a couple of big bikes. And uh, I'm not going to go into that too too much. But there was one that I really, really loved. I absolutely wanted to buy it. Went down, sat on it. And I couldn't keep the bike up. I'm not as tall in the legs as I thought I would be for a big adventure sports bike. So... That went totally off the cards, even though I absolutely loved the bike. Next bike I went to look at, everybody said, oh, this is one of the better bikes that uh, this brand do. Loved it, took one look at it and thought, God, it looks like sloth from the Goonies. And everyone else is like, you're, you're out of your head, you don't know what you're talking about. It's a gorgeous looking bike, it's, it's like a transformer. To me, it's an ugly bike. I, I have certain views on sort of bikes that I like so it's each to their own opinion when uh, you go to look at a bike so we're just going to head back down the short carriage so I get a little bit of extra mileage on it gives me time to obviously go nice little uh, free wheeler there So heading back through the box again, one, two, three, four, and five. And with these dual sport tyres, it does fold well into those corners. Nice bit of road holding, and obviously this is new tyres on this bike. It does the job exceptionally well. So nice damp day like today, roads aren't going to be as sticky as they were on a hot day. As a first bike for a 17 year old, something that uh, if you live in the country with the dual sport tyres you can go do a little bit of green laning, obviously not too much but it would cope adequately if you happen to be sort of country laning with a lot of gravel, a lot of grit, a lot of dirt, a lot of mud, dual sport tyres are always going to be better than standard road tyre. So currently we're five miles in another 15 to go we're going to edit out here and I'm going to cut back in when we go back in on the urban route so we'll catch up with you guys in just a few so coming off the dual carriageway 
and what we're going to do just to show you these dual sport tyres in action we're going to do a, a few of the back roads around one of the local villages so you can tell from the road conditions a lot of gravel, a lot of dirt, a lot of grit a lot of potholes as well and a lot of steep hills so obviously just taking my time nice steady 30 mile an hour obviously 60 mile an hour road you wouldn't want to be doing 60 down here as you can tell just looking from that camera view there is a lot of grit a lot of dirt on the road and these dual sport tyres are just soaking up no wonder from the tyres at all And we're going to be heading down very shortly down one of the very small twisty country roads and it is very very dark obviously I'm running with an iridium screen so it's a case of visor up on this now this has a lot of gravel on this road I know this road very very well because obviously my local village a lot of debris a lot of gravel but the bike is still very very planted so what better to show off these tyres and you can just hear that gravel crunching under those tyres absolutely no wonder from the tyres whatsoever so if you happen to live out in the sticks in the countryside where there is a lot of these back roads this would possibly be the bike for you big patch of gravel absolutely no wonder from those tyres whatsoever and even on the corners with a lot of gravel down the bike is still planted on those dual sports load of potholes and the suspension is just soaking it up now obviously the only thing I can smell through my visor now is the cattle in the local fields lovely smell so just moving back out into the traffic back onto one of the minor roads now I'm just pulling down the hill doing the job very very effectively so ideal thing if you wanted to go on those twisty back roads on the countryside this would be the bike to do it definitely worth getting a bike with uh, dual sport tyres or some knobblies if you are going to be going and commuting into the countryside so halfway in on the mileage and not a single issue with this bike at all and obviously lots of bumpy roads down here and I've not felt a single bump come up and really buffet me about as such. The suspension is doing an absolutely perfect job. As you can tell, because my voice isn't wavering, I'm not like... Uh, 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 uh. But even on some greasy roads with those corners, that's the job. As we say, Lexamoto Assault. If you did want one of these, they are in big demand at the moment. They've got the new colour schemes that are coming in. So they've got blue and yellow, which is the new colour scheme. There's a grey one, I believe, the black one. They've changed lots of colours, so the new assaults have got a huge colour range now. That might be worth, obviously, local Lexmodo dealer. Have a look. See what they've got in stock. I know they are in high demand. 4,000 bikes due to come in in the next month or so. Lex Moto and already 50% of those have been pre-ordered so the best thing to do if you are after a bike check with your local dealer what's the availability is it in stock if it's not and it's out of stock can you pre-order a lot of customers are putting deposits on bikes and pre-ordering their motorcycles the simple fact is the next batch is not due to hit until September the 10th and then the next batch is going to be October and November. So don't leave it to the last minute to buy yourself a motorcycle. 
because you are going to be disappointed. Bikes are selling like hotcakes at the moment, especially with social distancing going on. But uh, quick ride test for a customer. Next mode I was Salt 125 in blue. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Doesn't really bother me. Leave your comments down the bottom. I'd love to hear what your comments are. We love feedback from customers and from people watching the videos. And until the next time when we catch up, as always, social media on the page revbomb.co.uk. Eclipse are on the first page and then all my social media is on my social media page, last page of the website, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Big thanks to everybody that obviously sends me stuff and decides to, uh, oh can you mention me on the website? If you happen to be a company and uh, you want a little mention on the website, feel free to drop me an email or drop me a line on one of my pages be very very happy just to include you on until the next time it's Red Bomb wishing you be well ride safe and it's a big goodbye from me